When I pass by treasure being tossed out, I have to go take a look. So I saw this 32 inch TV sitting by the curb on its way to the landfill. I checked to make sure the screen wasn't cracked and took it home. All right, let's try to figure out what's wrong with this guy. This is an older Samsung. And whenever I see an older Samsung, I think there's a bad capacitor on the power supply. So I have it plugged in. Let's turn it on and see what happens. All right, so first there's a lot of lines on the screen. I don't know if you can see that with the glare, but there's all these lines on here. Uh, so let me plug in an input and see if that changes anything. There's not much happening here as I'm cycling through the inputs. Oh, hey, look at that. Ah! Wow. All right, so that was mega loud, ear piercing loud. You saw the screen looked okay for like a second. Then I got messed up and then it blew out my eardrums. So let's get the back cover off and look at the boards to see if we can see any obvious problems. Simple enough back here, this is the power supply, main board. Up here behind this is the T-Con board. And over here, this is the inverter board. This is not an LED TV, it uses CCFL bulbs. And that's what this does, it powers those bulbs. Now I always want to fix things as inexpensively as possible, so that means replacing components. And as I look at this, I don't see anything that jumps out at me. These older Samsungs are notorious though, for bad capacitors on the power supply. A classic sign of a bad capacitor is a bulged top. Here's an example of one. You can see how the top is bumped up a little bit. When I look at this power supply though, I see a lot of dust, but the capacitors don't have any obvious signs of failures. So my initial guess is that it's the main board over here because this TV has at least three problems. It has those lines on the screen, it has that cycling, the power went on and off, and it has that ear piercing sound. Here's a diagnostic trick for you. If you have one of these old TVs, you can get a hair dryer and put it right on this area where the capacitors are and if you notice that your symptoms go away then most likely you have to replace those capacitors. I did this on this TV just for kicks and it, nothing changed so I still have those three problems. I'm also not going to measure any voltages on the TV yet because this looks to me like they'd all be there. The screen is on, most things are working, it just they're kind of messed up so it's time to go to eBay. All right so put in the model number and do a search and the results that come up <laughs> the first thing is a repair kit we don't want the T-Con board. Oh look, another repair kit, a repair service. This is looking pretty promising. We have this listing here. Look at this main board, <laughs> power cycles, lines, and screeching. Those are the exact same three problems we have. All right, I'm gonna go with this listing. It's a few dollars more, but it does include an extra chip in case I need it, so let's pick it up. While we're waiting for the parts to arrive, let's get the main board out and get it over to the operating table. Okay, the package has arrived, so let's see what we get. We have some instructions here. And it looks like there are those two integrated circuit chips. Looks like two capacitors up there and a resistor. All right, so after reading the instructions here, it says we don't actually need this resistor. It's just there as a courtesy in case you lose it while working on these parts. And down here, it tells us where to find these parts. And we're looking for C102, C131, which is gonna be marked on the board. And over here, we're gonna replace this guy, IC101. Okay, so I found two of the parts. The instructions say to look on the backside of the board, and this area is where two of the parts are. Here we can see the label of C102. This is the capacitor. Now see this gray bar right here. This is important because it tells us the polarity and so we need to put the new one on in the same orientation. And down here you can see IC101 and we know the orientation that this chip is supposed to go on is because this little dimple right here on the chip. And then up here is this resistor that in case we lost it, we have a spare. Let me explain some of the tools I'm going to be using on this operation. This is a hot air station. This thing puts out very hot air and it's going to melt the solder. So I'm going to use this to remove the IC chip. You'll also see me use this thing. This is hot tweezers. It basically has two soldering irons with this lever action where you can grab components to take them off or put them back on a board. And of course, I'll be using my standard soldering iron as well. So I'll begin by adding some flux to the board. It gets dispensed with this handy syringe. And with my hot air station set at 370 degrees Celsius, I put it right on the chip and nearby things get hot as well so it's easy once the solder gets molten to just pull the components right off of the board. Next I clean off the old solder with a copper solder braid and with the new chip in place in the correct orientation I tack down each pin one at a time and making sure that the chip stays flat and each pin is not electrically connected to its neighbor. And with the capacitor in the right orientation using the hot tweezers I can install it fairly easily. 
And so the directions help me again to find C131 on the front of the board. And in case you're wondering, I'm going ahead and replacing all three of these components without testing them, just because replacing them is a fairly quick procedure. And when I'm all done, because I was using flux, I use isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush to clean off the board. We're ready to test the main board. And if this doesn't work, we'll add this extra chip that we got in the repair kit. And in case you're wondering, I did test the capacitors and none of them were shorted. So likely it was the chip that was at fault. All right, we got the screws in for the main board and we got to make sure to put all the connectors back in especially the speakers right here because we need to test everything all right here's the moment of truth i'm going to plug it in i actually have no idea what's going to happen and hopefully my eardrums don't blow out this time turn it on hey we got a good picture and no screeching at least not yet all right let me try a different source this is encouraging so far. Hey, look at that. Good picture, no weird sounds. As a child, receiving a new toy or game was an event filled with eagerness. All right, look at that. The sound works too, and my eardrums are saved. So after some tests, the picture still looks great, and there's been no problem with the audio. It was most likely that chip that was on the main board that the repair kit helped us to fix. So once again, we saved a device from the landfill with a simple fix. So if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up, and have a great day.